I'm Jake Monroe. I'm a soil management specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture and Food. And I'm here at the University of Guelph Ridgetown campus speaking with Dr. Dave Hooker. We're going to talk about his long-term cover crop trial and what he's seen over the first few years. Let's get started. Can you tell us a little bit about the motivation for starting this trial a few years ago? A group of us, uh, for a few years, there were a lot of questions that were asked about what's the value of long-term cover crops? Because we weren't seeing that many um, positive results or crop improvements because of cover crops in the short term. And sometimes it takes 15 years for a system to equilibrate to a change in a cropping system practice. Maybe we just need to do this cover crop uh, implementation over a number of years, and then after a number of years, then we'll see improvements on corn and soybean yield. How many sites do you have? Is this a two-site trial, three-site trial? Well, this trial is a two-site trial. So there's a sister site at Alora Research Station. Ridgetown represents the deep southwest. Alora would represent a shorter growing season. Two different soil types, two different environments, and that was one of the main reasons why we decided to have two of these locations. So take us through the, the crop sequence and then some of the specific cover crop treatments that we're looking at within the trial. So this trial, we have two locations, Alora and Ridgetown. We have two cropping systems at each location, a corn soybean wheat rotation and a corn soybean rotation. And also we have two tillage treatment combinations as well. We have a plowed system and then we have a no-till or a strip-till system. Within each one of those rotations, we have cover crop intensities that range from no cover crop at all to very the most intensive cover crop treatment that we can possibly imagine. How are the cover crops established after wheat? So it, broadcast and incorporation or, or drilled, and then what are you doing for termination of those cover crops uh, prior to the corn crop? We usually seed the cover crops about a week to 10 days after wheat harvest. We make sure that the volunteer wheat is controlled to the best of our ability, and then we drill in the cover crop after wheat harvest, except underseeded red clover, and that's underseeded into wheat in the month of March. We know that if termination can be delayed until maybe two weeks before corn planting or even at corn planting, we get some cover crop growth in the spring and that could provide some benefits of that added growth in the spring. But also cover crops could create some issues in terms of how to kill them effectively because we don't want them to compete with the corn crop. So have you noticed any visual differences in the, in the cash crops following different cover crop treatments? We found that if cover crop was struggling, for instance, oats, a pure stand of oats, if it was struggling, if it was nitrogen deficient during that time, when we plant corn the next year, that corn is also struggling with nitrogen deficiency. But we, well, we include the 50 pounds of the acre of nitrogen after wheat harvest, those oats have a much lower C to N ratio. That oat residue can break down much more quickly and it doesn't seem to make the corn deficient of nitrogen the following year. What have you observed to date in terms of the effects of cover crops on crop yield? Overall, we have not seen very many yield increases or next to no yield increases in corn, soybeans and wheat with the inclusion of cover crops. There's some effects that cover crops may have, but definitely not quite statistically significant yet. So hopefully with more years, we'd be able to establish these trends, just like what we have in the long-term tillage rotation nitrogen trial that we have. What advice would you give to growers who are just starting out with cover crops and trying to figure out what, what the right approach might be? Well, I think the easiest place to put cover crops on a farm situation is just to make sure that your crop rotation is sound and diverse, especially to have wheat in the rotation. There's nothing really easier than to plant or drill a cover crop after wheat harvest or to underseed wheat uh, into red clover. Dave, can you tell us your two or three take homes from the trial so far? First one is that there's just tremendous spatial and temporal variability with cover crops. We found that 50 pounds the acre of nitrogen after wheat harvest can double the amount of biomass, cover crop biomass, which could have tremendous influence on future organic matter formation. Then the third point is probably the effect that cover crops have what we've seen on the actual crops themselves. So we can't detect 
any crop yield improvement yet from cover crops, but we know that you know the cover crops are adding carbon to the soil, they're benefiting soil structure. So we hope that we can see these benefits in the long term.